you know, we picked something I think that looked – we kind of wanted a classic look, you know, uh-huh. label, bottle. And I, I think we kind of achieved it with this. Um, you know, oh, I, I mean, y'all knocked it out of the park. Yep. Yeah. A thousand and percent. I love the name Cut Above, too. Who did that? Yeah. So uh, that kind of comes um, – we had a, a family, I guess it was more of a ranch. We used to have cattle and horses and stuff. And right. uh, so you think, of, you know, you start with cows and, you know, you think about a meat being, you know, you could cut a meat, cut yep. above. Cut above. Yep. Yeah. And then when you make whiskey, you make cuts. And so yep. uh, it just kind of naturally fit. And it's kind of, you know, if you already got it, why reinvent the wheel? And, right. Uh, yeah. Just leave it alone. Yeah. So we already had the name, was already using it. And so uh, we just kind of used it kept on with it i like it and so i, I see you manalizing the cork over there yeah, yeah i was no, about to ask I, that was my next every, question everything to me matters like that and, and it's show so it to the camera this is not a Joe. traditional cam. i mean no, not a traditional yeah, cork. that's a uh so i've got a few knocks on this one from different people okay okay so this is a all synthetic one piece right okay but i'm gonna tell you why this is the one we have this one will not disintegrate it will not come apart correct you will never lose a cork in your bottle correct and it'll last forever yep and so it'll always be good. If you get, I mean, I don't know, you know, and I'm, pure cork's hard to come by too, right? Isn't it? Isn't no, it? it's no? not. I mean, it's a little bit more expensive. I mean, not not that it makes that much, but it's like if we're gonna cover it in wax number one, you're not gonna see it, mm-hmm. right? And then this one lasts forever. I mean, it's so aggravating when you go to open a bottle, oh and yeah, cork breaks I, off. I had that happen a oh, ton of times. All time. the time. Yeah, yeah. And so I had a bartender friend. He's like, he's like, please don't use a natural cork, man. Right, right. You right, know, right. And so that's how we ended up with this cork. Um, you know, a T top, a bar top, or whatever you want a technical term to call it. Uh, but it works really well. It holds the wax well. It's it's got like a corrugation to it, so it's easier to grip. It's taller yeah. than a lot of them, so I mean, you've got that positive grip to it, and it's easy to get out. It's a carryover from our shine, and so it was also kind of like, well, we can just keep using the same one and only inventory one cork, uh, and so which we, is cost effective in the correct. end, right? And just it's just streamlined stuff, right? Like and, logistically, and so then we got to this bottle. And uh, this was, like I said, a fill-in. It so was, that's a single barrel? Yeah, single barrel was what we've been using it for. So it's got a regular cork. So this, under the wax, is wood, but the cork itself is actually synthetic. Okay. Oh, okay. So it'll still hold up and last. It's got a natural cork look to it. You can mm-hmm. kind of see it's got dents and, and striations and stuff in it. Uh, it's it's a little bit bigger. So we had to change for this bottle. Uh, the, the diameter of the cork is actually larger um, than the old one. I will say... You know, I didn't want this bottle. We got it. If you pour it, it pours really, really nice because of the way I don't the 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 mouth of the bottle has kind of got a larger flange and yeah. it's kind of dished a little bit. Kind of looks like a saucer, kind of, and it pours really nice. Right. Um, and so actually, you know, actually in, in the beginning I didn't like it, but I, it's I grown on me a lot. I like yeah. it. I like I, it. I, I, I like I the, think, the water. I think mouth. with that bottle, and and you eliminate a lot of the. And I know this sounds crazy, but in the bourbon world, is the neck pour. Yeah, you know what I'm. You know what I'm talking about. So there's a lot of guys that like they they open a bottle and they pour that first two or three glasses and they're like, ah, it's not good. And then ah. they get down into it and it aerates a little bit. And they're yeah. like, oh well, that maybe that was the neck pour. And I was like, when I first started drinking whiskey, I was like, what the hell is a neck pour? Well, you know that kind of happens with all bottles. Though. I mean, the more air you right. get into right. it, right, the more air you get into it. But yeah. Well, that's I why you're supposed, that to, bottle, you're supposed to crack them and let them sit. Correct. Right. You're supposed, like a bottle of wine. Right. Yeah. Well, you mentioned, yeah, too, about the higher proofs. Uh, I had a 1792 that was like a 125, like, foolproof. Yeah. And at first, I did not. I was like, ooh, it's almost like rubbing Rye alcohol. my favorite. I drank a little bit of it, and I put it in my cabinet. I kind of forgot about it. Rye. Yeah. Oh, that rye is fire. Yeah. It, I kind of forgot about it. And then I went back to it, like, way, I don't know, months later, and uh, left it open for a little while, too, before I drank it. And yeah, it was a completely different taste. It was a completely different taste. I've had a couple of whiskeys like that. I definitely agree. And with I was you. like, damn, this is yeah. better, you know? So. Yeah. They, they say once you get down to like the last third or quarter, you kind of want to go ahead and drink it there because after that, it kind of gets gotcha. too much. 